the best LeBron James, in my opinion, was LeBron James in Cleveland the second time. And you remember he went back home to Cleveland. They traded for Kevin Love. And so you had Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving and LeBron James as a big three in Cleveland. So in the 2014 season, back in Cleveland, LeBron, he had 25 points per game on 49% shooting from the floor, six rebounds, seven assists per game. But I thought the moment came in the NBA Finals because he led them to the NBA Finals again. So in the NBA Finals, no Kyrie, because Kyrie went down in game one in overtime. Kevin Love was out the entire NBA Finals. So there's no Kyrie Irving, there's no Kevin Love for the Cleveland Cavaliers. It's LeBron James versus the whole entire Golden State Warriors in their prime. This is Clay Thompson in his prime, Andre Iguodala in his prime. This is when the Golden State Warriors, you know, their dynasty began. This LeBron, LeBron in that NBA Finals, he averaged 41 points per game, 12 and 8 in those first three games of that series. Let me say that again. He averaged 41 points per game, 12 and 8. He was dominating in this NBA Finals. In 2015. And this was the NBA Finals, remember, where there were actually people that were saying, even though LeBron and the Cavaliers came up short, they said LeBron James was the best player on the floor. It was the first time I actually agreed with witnesses. Witnesses, LeBron fans. That was the first time I actually said they got a point. Because LeBron was the best player on the floor. He was the best player on the floor by far. By far. And so what ended up happening was the Cavs, they were up 2-1. Game four in LeBron's house in Cleveland. Steve Kerr made an adjustment. He inserted Andre Iguodala into the starting lineup. In game four, LeBron struggled a little bit. And Andre Iguodala had a major impact on the NBA Finals. And he helped the Golden State Warriors in that game. And they went on to win the series in six. So they won three straight games. And I thought LeBron was sensational in that NBA Finals in 2015. I thought he was sensational because he had little to no help. And I thought the NBA Finals was actually competitive because of LeBron James and his greatness. Now, let's fast forward to the next year. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love, they returned back to the lineup. In 2016, we all know the comeback from being down 3-1 LeBron won NBA Finals MVP, and he was a driving force for that Cleveland Cavaliers team. In that NBA Finals, these are LeBron James numbers, 30 points per game, 11 rebounds per game, 9 assists per game on 49% shooting, shooting very efficient from the field. And I remember the biggest play of the NBA Finals. It wasn't the – it wasn't the – like I always say Kyrie Irving's shot was the biggest shot of the NBA Finals. But LeBron James' chase down block on Iggy was the most impactful play of the NBA Finals, period. I don't get, I love Kyrie Irving's shot because it reminded me of MJ's walk-off shot in the 1998 NBA Finals against the Utah Jazz over Brian Russell. But LeBron James' chase down block on Iggy was more impactful than Kyrie Irving's big shot because without LeBron James' chase down block, You don't have Kyrie Irving in that position to hit that go-ahead shot over Steph Curry. That chase down block was outstanding. And I say all the time, I think Kobe and MJ are my goals. I think they're the two greatest players in NBA history. I think LeBron James is also right there neck and neck with Kobe and Jordan. But I'm giving Kobe and Jordan the slight nod over LeBron. Kobe and Jordan could not have done what LeBron James did on that play with that chase down block. That was that was all LeBron. That I, I feel like if he was like after LeBron retires and at his Hall of Fame ceremony, I think that should be the play that they show. Like, I mean, he, he has a ton of highlights in his career, obviously, to choose from. But I think the chase down block on Iggy has to be the biggest highlight of his career. 